Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create some time intelligence formulas in PowerPivot. PowerPivot actually has 35 functions specifically for time intelligence. As you can see, there's quite a few here, but I'm only going to go through a couple of them. And these are the three kind of categories that I'll go through. These performance to date uh, time intelligence calculations, uh, previous period ones, and something like a running average. So let's see how we do this. First off, let's cover some background. I have a calendar table, I have a data table, and these are be connected through the date relationship. So there's gonna be a one to many relationship with my data from my calendar table. So I have my data table here. I'm gonna bring it into the data model. So I've got the Power Pivot tab open. Click add to data model, and it's gonna add it to the data model here you can see, and close this and bring in my calendar table to add to the data model. Click anywhere in there. This is already a table. Click add to the data model. And what I need to do now is create a relationship between these two tables. Go into diagram view and just select the date table, the date table from the data, the date field from the data table, and connect it with the date field in the calendar table. And now we have a one-to-many relationship. There's a unique date here, and these are non-unique dates. Now I can create a pivot table and use those time intelligence formulas, those DAX formulas. Click on pivot table. Let's put this on a new worksheet. And I'll just put some data here. We'll put quantity here into the values field. When you move fields into the value section, it creates an implicit me measure. Usually it's a better idea to create an explicit measure by going into the measure field. And this is a sum, so you can actually do a sum quantity. But for this particular video, I'll just stick with implicit measures. For the calendar, from the calendar table, I'm just going to add the date into the rows field here. So now we're going to have a nice little view of the different dates. So sometimes Excel, when you drag the fields into the rows area, it groups the field. So I'm going to click ungroup and get rid of that grouping. And so now we have our dates here that are coming from the calendar table. Let's create our first measure. And we had mentioned before, so we're going to cover performance to date. Oops, this one should have been quarter to date, Q to date. That's for quarter to date, month to date, quarter to date, and then year to date. Let's see how we do that. Go back into the pivot table in the sheet one here. Go to measures. This is going to be a new measure. We're going to make our measure under the table name. So click that drop down, select on calendar, and this is going to be month MTD, month to date. So we're going to do the total, total month to date. It's going to ask for what our expression is. I will select quantity, just type quantity, and where we have the sum of quantity, select that. And comma, and the dates. The date's going to come off of the calendar table, that date field. Double click that. Close parentheses. We don't need to filter. Check formula. There's no errors. Let's make this into a number, whole number, and use the thousand separator. Click OK. And we should get our first field here, which is month to date. So you can see here, this is for the month of December. If I select all of this and see where it goes to the 31st of December, that total sh should equal 1.245528, which we see here is 1.245528. So it gives us our month to date totals here. So we can also create quarter to date totals. I'm going to go back into new measure. Actually, what I can do is I can just select the old measure and copy that. Select this, edit, because I'm just going to change from month to date to quarter to date. So control C to copy, click cancel. Since I'm in this manage measures, I'll just click new. And we're going to call this quarter to date. This is going to be in the calendar table. Paste what I copied over and have that extra equal sign there. I didn't need that there. Let's select this again, control C to copy for next time. And instead of month to date, we're going to make this quarter to date. Press tab, click check formula, no errors. Select number, whole, whole number, whoops, and use my thousand separator. Click OK, and click close, and I should have my quarter to date. It didn't add it this time, but I can just 
take it and put it into the values field here. So this is quarter to date. This is probably easier if I group this now. So select this, right click and group, and it defaults by it defaults to the first one month. Click OK. And I've got my month. And I have this row labels, this generic row labels. What I'm gonna do is change the report layout just to make it a little bit more descriptive. We have our date and dates here, right? So this is quarter to date and this is the first quarter. So if I add all these up here, this this one, it should equal, whoops, January, February, March, it should equal 822500, which it does right here. So that's my quarter to date. Let's make one for year to date. Go back to Power Pivot, click Measures, New Measure, and this one is going to be called, going to be called Year to Date. Control V to paste that one, and instead of MTD, Year to Date. You can see I can select it here. It's giving me the three options that are performance to date, month, year, month, quarter, and year. So we have our year down here. Double click that, press Tab, whoops, delete that. Let's just check the formula. See if that works. Yep. Go to number. And this is also going to be a whole number. Click the separators. Click OK. I should have my year to date show up by default here. Oh, one thing I also notice here is there's a December, but there's a December for both 2017 and 2018. So I'm going to bring this year over here because we have 2017 here too, right? So click on that. Just click 2018. And let's see if we've got our year to date. Okay, so this is just for 2018. We can see as we progress and we add the months, let's just say we add everything from June. That should be the year to date so far for June 13 million plus. And we have our 13 million plus down here, right? And that should equal that because at the end of the year, the sum of quantity should equal that. So let's figure out what we can do for our next category of time intelligence. So we want to do previous periods. So maybe you want to do some comparisons for a previous day or a previous month. So oh, there's a U there. That didn't need to be there. Previous quarter or previous years. Let's see how we can do this. Go back into my sheet one here. And let's remove these so they don't get confusing. Go to measures, new measure. And we're going to call this one. So here we can say previous day, previous day. And we're going to use the previous day func DAX function, but we have to wrap it within a calculate function. So calculate is one of those really powerful fun DAX functions that we can use. And basically what it does is you're going to calculate a measure based on some kind of filter. So double click that. We're going to calculate our quantity or our sum of quantity based on our filter, which is previous day. Click on that, double click that. And the previous day, we're going to take the date from the calendar. Double click that. Close parentheses once, twice. Check formula. No errors. Our number, it's going to be a whole number. Use the thousand separator. Click OK. And here we need to change this back to dates. So let's ungroup it. Right click, ungroup. So this previous day entry was back on December 31st, 2017. But we can see here, when we get to January 1st, 2018, we have our sum of quantity 291, and we have 291 here for the previous day. And you can see it matches for the other subsequent days. So that's previous day. I'm going to go back to that previous day measure so I can just copy that function, manage measure. Where was it previous day? Click here, click edit, control C to copy, click cancel, close, and let's make a new measure. And this is going to be for month. So we'll say previous month. And in the formula window here, type control V. And we're going to calculate previous month. Delete that and select month. Let's tab it and see if it finishes up. Great, it does. Click check formula, no errors. Click on number, click on whole number. Use the 1000 separator, click OK. And now we should have a previous month here. And let's group this again. Right click group and group by months, click OK. And you can see this better where now it's given us our previous month. So our sum of quantity here is 2.4 million, but unfortunately we don't have the comma, the commas to separate thousands, but we have it over here, 
right, and 4018 here, we have 4018 here, so that gives us our previous month's values. Let's see what we can do for the other ones. Let's do not previous month, but previous quarter. We can also do this. Previous quarter, control VV to paste that one, and we have previous quarter, select that. Press tab, whoops, didn't need to add that one. Let's delete that. Just click check formula. Let's see if it took that, yep. Click number, and this is whole number, use thousand separator, and we should have a quarter field here now. So if I clicked on here, this is the value for the previous quarter, which would be 8255790, which is sum it down there. So April, the previous quarter was these three months. And we do previous year, and I can just say previous year, click on new measures, type in the measure name, previous year, control V to paste because I kept that in the clipboard. Delete that, we have previous year, check formula, no errors, go to number, and click whole number, thousand separator, click OK. And so what's better here is if I change this and ungroup it, and also get rid of this filter for 2018, click all, all right? And now you see there's nothing here because there's no value for previous year, but once I get to January 1st, 2018, it's gonna look at all the cumulative quantity 1.2 million for the 20, 2017 year. So if I click all of that, select all of that, you can see 1.245228, which is my value here. So this is the previous year's value. So that's where we can get previous X day, month, quarter, year fields using DAX. Now, the last one I want to show is this running average. So this could be useful if we want to calculate a, a running total or running average. And it's going to be using the dates in period function. Go back to the sheet one here for our pivot table. Get rid of these four. We don't need them anymore. Let's deselect those boxes. And we're going to ha click on measure, new measure, also under the calendar. And we're going to call this, so let's make, give this five day. We'll call this a five day average. Or let's see how, let's see this first as a five day running total. So we go running total, total, and we're going to say calculate, calculate our quantity, or sum, sum of quantity. And this is based on dates in, what's dates in period. Double click that. And the dates and period, the first thing is our date, which is the calendar date. And what is our start date? Well, our start date is going to be the start date, which it's going to be on that row. And we can we have to wrap this into a, a function. And you can either you wrap it into a min or max function. I probably choose the max function. And I'll, I'll wrap the date within the max function. Close parentheses. Number of intervals. So. The number of intervals that we want to use is the five day, right? So we have to go back five days. It's going to be minus five. And what is the interval value? The interval value is days. So if I just press D, I can see we have this day interval. And this icon indicates that it's an interval argument. So click on that. Close parentheses. I think I need to close parentheses again. Check formula. No errors. Click on number and whole number, use the thousand separator, click OK. And we should have a running total for the days. That's going to be for the last five days. All right, so if I click on five days here, that should equal up to 315, 297, which it does. If I go down here, we see 315, 297. If I offset it and get the next five days, we have 252, 997 which gives me the 252997 here. Right. So our running total is OK, but we really wanted to have an average. So how do we get that? I'm going to go back to measures, manage measures, and click on the five day running total. Click edit. Let's call this average. And all we need to do is we just need to divide this by five. Divide by five, click OK. Click close. And we're going to have our five day average total. So if I hover. If I select five here, right, we have 63,059. We can see that our average here is 
63059.4. And uh, if I wanted to have decimal places, that would give me that my point 0.4 there, but I didn't select that. So that's the way that we can do a, a running average. So I covered performance to date, previous period, and running average. These are a few of the DAX function, the time intelligence functions out of those 30 plus functions. These probably come something more commonly that you would use. You would use performance to date. You want to use previous period because you want to compare things back from the past. And you might want to use running average. So there's a lot more time intelligence functions that you know, as you notice when we looked at the website. But these are ones that you probably would commonly see. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Thank you.